Hey guys, welcome back to Impractical Gaming. Today we're going to be talking about the Ubisoft press conference that was last night. And to be honest, it was pretty good. I did say they would be the underdogs in some way, shape or form. I'm not saying that they had the best E3, but they definitely had some surprises that I was definitely quite excited for. And I wasn't expecting to be this excited for Ubisoft's games. But lo and behold, that's what E3 does to us. Ubisoft kicked us off in typical Ubisoft fashion by trying to weird us out with yet another... Just Dance live performance, which I'm kind of, I'm getting used to it, but it doesn't mean I'm particularly warrant having it there. I mean, they have to do it. Just Dance is, annoyingly, one of a really good franchise for them, and they're making a lot of money from it, so there's no reason for them not to milk it while they can. It's just the live performances are really quite weird. I think at one point they were playing Finesse Remix on the trumpets, which I was so weirded out about because I really liked the song and hearing it in the trumpet form was quite, quite jarring, I'm not gonna lie. After the awkwardness of Just Dance, they finally got into Beyond Good and Evil 2. They kicked us off of a bang with a very cinematic trailer of Beyond Good and Evil 2 and it felt, it felt like a movie at times. It felt like this could be a genuine animated film because I was proper engrossed in that trailer. I was so, like, wanted to know about the story. I mean, I'm not playing Beyond Good and Evil 1. But this definitely makes me want to play Beyond Good and Evil 1 because it looks so interesting. And Jade at the end looks completely badass. Now apparently this is a prequel. So I it's probably better if I played this first maybe. I'm not sure. And maybe I should play the first game first. I don't know. But I'm really looking forward to playing it. They have shown us some gameplay of Ganesha and it looks really cool. It's a great open world like flying spaceship like, kind of things that you'd see in any typical sci-fi film. It kind of reminds me of Treasure Planet, if anyone's actually seen that, like the, but I even know that was in 2D. It looks like that, and I'm really excited to see what becomes of it. Ubisoft have also done something special with the Space Monkey program, which allows fans to contribute their own ideas to the game in their own format, which means you can contribute to music, to character design, to world design, to like posters on the walls, that kind of stuff, like how characters interact with each other, that kind of stuff, like, you can contribute any idea, any idea that you want, and they will look into it and they'll put it into the game, which I think is pretty cool. And I always feel like Ubisoft always listen to the fans. I mean, not that other game companies don't, but I always feel like Ubisoft, they feel like they care quite a lot. I feel like they care a lot more just because like of the way they look every time. They always look so excited. They look like little kids on stage. This goes to show what you said that we nailed it in like the most excited fashion ever and it was left on the mic and it just goes to show how much these devs care about their games and I absolutely love that. Okay, next they talked about Rainbow Six Siege and it wasn't really much news about the game other than the competitive side but they, what I found pretty interesting was the Rainbow Six Siege documentary which would include gamers, streamers, like producers of the game. It's just like showing how Rainbow Six Siege has affected their lives and I think that's pretty cool because in one way or another games do affect our lives. Though there's not much to talk about the actual Rainbow Six Siege game and they didn't really have any other reveals. I just thought the documentary was a pretty cool idea and well I'll probably give it a watch. Even though I don't really play the game I always want to see how games affect people's lives in one way or another. They then went on to Trials Rising which had one of the weirdest entrances of any game dev or game director I've ever seen where he literally just fell into like this like monitor on like a podium and it completely broke and I've generally thought for a hot second that that wasn't meant to happen because I would love if that wasn't meant to happen if you just go whoop uh yeah I've just crashed that <laughs> it's just very it was just very 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 weird and I mean Trials is a fun game I'm not too excited about it it's not I used to play it like a lot when I was younger but right now I'm not too interested in it but it is still a big and growing community so props to them Next, we move on to the Division 2 trailer, and it looks so, so cool. You're literally the last line of defense to try and liberate America, and that is something that I think is really, really cool. The trailer looked so epic. Like, you just have to take on these, ba these bad guys. Like, obviously, there's this kind of, like, militia group that has taken over and is, like, making their own laws, their own rules, and if you don't abide by it, well, you die, basically. And you are the last people out there who could help stop them and I think that's a really cool idea and it was really cool that they're going to add free DLCs throughout the year and they are all free which is really great for gamers because adding DLCs on top which add to the story and having to pay for them is quite annoying especially where not a lot of gamers 
have the cash like myself. So finding out that it's free after buying the base game does like it gives me it gives you it gives them brownie points. It gives Ubisoft a lot of brownie points there. Okay, next wait, next thing we've done to Starlink Battle for Atlas, which is obviously your typical space shooter, which I wasn't too excited about at the start, but then out of nowhere, Ubisoft done it again. They brought out Shigeru Miyamoto and they announced that Star Fox would be available in Starlink if you're playing on the Nintendo Switch. And that to me is something that is really cool and has immediately made me interested in the game because I love Star Fox games. I absolutely love them. In fact, I think I have one here. I have Star Fox Adventures. I mean, it's not the, it's not the actual shooter because this is like on a kind of, not a platformer, but it's like you're on boots on the ground kind of thing, but it's a lot of fun and I love this game. So have seen Star Fox in any kind of like platform recently is just something that I'm excited for. And it's definitely made me more interested in Starlink than I would have ever been. Now, the last big news for me from the Ubisoft press conference that obviously we was all expecting was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And it starts off with a man throwing his son off a cliff, which kind of looks familiar if you've ever played Tekken. It's pretty much the same idea, which just shows that there are a lot of horrible followers out there in gaming, but you know. Uh, and you can play as either Alexios or Cassandra, which are two main characters. You have to play the whole story as them. You see Alexios as a kid to begin with, and then you see him grow up, whereas Cassandra is like a knight, he's a mercenary who works for the kingdom and is out there to try and kill people. And that's pretty damn cool. I, me, if I played it, I'm not sure who I would pick, but it obviously gives a lot of replay value because you can go through the story once, play as Alexios, then go back and play as Cassandra. Maybe there's some ties in between the storyline, which actually I would expect as much, but that does look pretty cool. And from first look at the gameplay, we can tell that Cassandra is a definite badass. The gameplay looks really, really clean. The mechanics look very polished. You can collect items from your enemies and gain abilities that way. And you have to like stockpile a bit, stockpile abilities and then like choose from a selection to use against your enemies. And seeing it used on Cassandra was pretty cool because she just looked like it looked a lot of fun just fighting in that environment it does worry me though a little bit how much more different is it to assassin's creed origins because assassin's creed do this a lot they release games quite i think basically every year and it's getting to the point where how much more different can it get i mean like obviously there was talk about how your choices affect the storyline and stuff like that which is something i'm always for but I feel like you need a bit more than that. I feel like Assassin's Creed should just take their time sometimes. You don't have to give out a game every single year. Sometimes take a break, give it two or three years, really work on a complete idea that's completely different, that completely revolutionizes the Assassin's Creed universe and then release it to the fans. And then we would definitely get probably one of the greatest works in Assassin's Creed. But we do have Odyssey now. It's coming out October 5th, I believe. Yes, it is coming out October 5th. So we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's a pretty wonderful game. And maybe they're just really good at working within a year's span. But who knows? We'll see. And that's pretty much it from the Ubisoft press conference. There were some big showings. And there were some obviously not so big showings. <clears throat> just don'ts. And unfortunately, my prediction of Watch Dogs 3 being shown or even teased was wrong. There was literally none of it. Um, which I'm shocked about, to be honest, because they teased it. For so long after like up to in the run up to E3 but maybe we'll see it probably later this year or something like that but talking about now we do have a lot of games to look forward to we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey to look forward to For Honor is something that we can look forward to as well I'm not sure if I mentioned that I may have forgotten if I did I'm sorry um, we also have uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2 of course so that's quite a lot of games in their backlog that Ubisoft have to offer us this year which is it's decent it's a decent e3 experience not the greatest i probably preferred last year's just a bit because it had a bit of a more of a wow factor to it but it's still pretty good make sure to like comment subscribe share and also hit that bell icon so you can keep up to date with all of my latest videos thanks for watching and i'll see you next time